Hey, what's up? I am Shelby. This is Channel Modes, a channel dedicated to helping you to thrive on YouTube. And in this video, I am going through my monthly review. So this is something, if you're newer here, every so often I do a mini review of my main channel, Michelle B. I talk about what's working, what's not working, how much I've grown, my intentions for my channel in the future, and I also do a little income report. So we are going to dive right into the video. The first thing that I want to talk about is my subscriber growth within the last month. So this review, to be clear, is actually for the month of January, and in January I grew 10.4 subscribers, which is pretty good. To give you some context, in October 2018, that was my last review that I did on this channel, and at that point in time I had 236k, and now I am at 298k, so that's a big amount of growth for a kind of short period of time. So what has been working for my channel? One thing that has been working really well for my channel is actually structured vlogs. So to clarify, there are vlogs that's just like, this is a day in my life, and these vlogs are more like vlogs with purpose. So I kind of vlog, but it's usually about a specific topic, or it has a specific focus, rather than just sort of a like, we'll find out what happens kind of vlog. I found that those have worked really well for my channel, in particular the Life Admin Day video that I did in December. So I want to do more Life Admin Day vlogs where I just go about my day getting a lot of like productive things done, Life Admin tasks. They're also really good videos because I get a lot of stuff done in them, which is always good. One thing that I think I've talked about in past reviews is creating longer videos. So a lot of my videos have been a little bit longer than they used to be. I remember I used to be like, okay, anything beyond five minutes is too much. And now I've gotten more to the point of like eight minutes to ten minutes happy with that And I don't think that it's me filling my videos with more fluff I think that my videos are still high quality and valuable They're just a little bit longer because I think I've accepted in my mind that I can create longer videos And ultimately it might be better for me because people do tend to stick around on longer videos for the same amount of time that they would on shorter videos, I mean the same percentage. And YouTube loves people sticking around on YouTube. They want people watching your videos for as long as possible. So not to say that you should ever increase the time of your videos for no real purpose, but I'm finding that longer videos are working for me. Another thing that is working really well for me is Instagram-y type thumbnails. I put thumbnails like this and this and this up on my videos and I find that they make my life a lot easier. But they also tend to get more clicks. So I actually talked about this with Trina who has her own YouTube channel about helping people to do YouTube. I've collabed with her in the past. I'll have it linked down below. And we talked about how when you have a female audience, they are more likely to click on photos that are more Instagram-y and visually appealing. Because a female audience at the end of the day is a little different to a male audience. But in particular, my target audience, my demographic, are gonna like photos that are a little bit more Pinteresty, a little bit more Instagram worthy. So I found that works really well for me. It's also really helpful because it means that I can reuse images from my Instagram, which makes life a whole lot easier. The next thing that's working really well for me is I've done a little bit of a rebrand for my channel. I mean, it still looks the same. You may not notice the rebrand, but it's something that I know very well in my head. So I've always had like a little channel plan, my little um, style guide, but I've gotten really serious about it this year, like at the start of this year. I'm gonna actually make a video walking you through my whole style guide so that you can get some ideas for your own channel. But having that style guide really clarified and really revisiting it at the start of the year has helped me with all of my branding aspects and making sure that everything is in line and works together. It's also really helped me with populating my Instagram feed and a whole bunch of other things, just keeping everything together and on brand. So what hasn't been working? Honestly, the main things that haven't been working for my channel are the fact that all my videos are still sit down. So I'm really trying to move away from primarily sit down videos, even though they're great. They're actually really effective from a planning perspective. It's much easier to sit down and just like bang out a bunch of videos. And I still see the value in them, but I'm really trying to focus more on those purposeful vlogs or those show versus tell videos. What I'm struggling the most with is firstly time because I do work part time it worked really well to have like one video planning day, one video filming day where I would just bulk film. That worked very well for a period of time. But now that I'm trying to do more of the vloggy type videos and more of like the journey and it's not all filmed on the one day, I found it really difficult to sort of get some kind of structure around that. So that's what I've been struggling with for the last two weeks. I've also been struggling with the planning of those videos because usually I'm quite a planner when it comes to my videos. Like this video isn't that well planned. It's just some 
points down on my phone. But my videos on my main channel are pretty well scripted. I'm not really interested in scripting like a vloggy type video, but when there's like a story video where it takes you from point A to point B, I do want there to be some kind of structure around it. If not in what I say, at the very least, like shot structure, because I know what I want and I want it to look a certain way and play out a certain way as well. So that is something that I've been struggling a lot with. I mean, it hasn't directly impacted my channel growth or anything, but it's been something that's impacting me from an organizational perspective. So my intentions for the next month is to film a lot more vloggy type content, stuff that I can mix in with my normal content that still delivers that feeling of motivation and inspiration that is so key on my main channel. I wanna create templates for how I plan the different types of content so that I don't feel a bit fuzzy when I start planning a video. I can just like open the template and be like, okay, this is what I need to do, whether it's storyboarding or whatever. And also I really want to learn how to create more anticipation at the start of my videos. So Nikki, I think Damar might be her name. She does this really well. And I don't know if she does it intentionally. If she does, she's really smart or she just, it's how she works naturally. But at the start of all of her videos, there's always a lot of anticipation about what's gonna come next. Like, what are you gonna find out in this video? She teases it a lot at the start of a video. That's something that I want to be able to do a little bit more, maybe not with my sit down videos, but more so with my longer vloggy type videos. And lastly, my income report for the month. So this income is literally income that's hit my bank. There's actually more income, but it's on the way. So in total, I made 1,300 and that was just from sponsorships. From AdSense, I made a lot. I made 6,865, which is above normal. I was making a lot of videos in December and I think that kind of carried on into January that income which is great from my ebook I made 1200 I think this is a really good time for my ebook to be selling because it's that January December period where people are like okay I'm resetting I want to declutter my space so my ebook did particularly well so all in all this month I made nine thousand five hundred and four Australian dollars so that's two thousand three hundred and seventy six per week which is pretty excellent really let's keep in mind that I have I haven't taken any tax away from that at all. And I also haven't taken any spendings away from that, although there haven't been that many spendings, but anyway. So that is my monthly review for the month of January in 2019. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something from it. I hope that if anything, it inspired you. I feel like this was a shorter monthly review than usual. If you like this video, you might want to watch my little playlist of monthly reviews. I'll have that listed on the screen and I'll have it linked down below. I appreciate you guys so very much and I will see you soon.